Hello there, welcome to my series, come to Sunday brunch in Avignon, Provence, south of France. Before I go on to the main subject, I should say that this series is one within another larger project called Vintage Street Filming During COVID-19 and War. Why vintage? Because we are using vintage equipment for street filming. The camera is the Leica SL released in 2016 and now considered to be obsolete. The lens is a very special lens. It was made for 16 millimeter film cameras way back in 1959 by Gordon Cook, the chief lens designer of Taylor Hobson, famous Cook series of cinema lenses. This lens is able brilliantly to separate the foreground from the background. It has enormous depth of field and perspective. Now, cut to the chase, the main subject, Sunday brunch in Avignon, Provence. Sunday is a very special day in south of France when the cafe life of the Mediterranean fully comes to life. People pour out, individuals, children, families, and they congregate in gather in different cafes, in different squares, the plus, and uh, above all, in the market, Le Al. They sit around the various bars and the whole place shakes and hums with animation. And those who are more traditional then would go home and sit down to a family lunch of 10 or 12 uh, people. This series starts with a traditional French breakfast, a petit déjeuner with croissant and different kind of vinoiserie. It is called vinoiserie because uh, these uh, patisseries are supposed to have come from Vienna. We have different kinds of bread and then we move on towards an English style breakfast with cold cuts of meat, charcuterie, eggs and so on and then arrive at the apéro or apéritif with a glass of wine and different kinds of snacks. And then the plat, déjeuner, the main course. This is a traditional French croissant. My patissier made it of patisserie authentic in Rue Carnot Avignon makes the best Viennoiserie in Avignon Intramuros. And this is a pain au chocolat. And here we have different kinds of toasts, wholemeal bread, called croissant after the flour from which the bread is made. Mimi is a recently opened bakery and small artisan setup with organic ingredients. Why the bread is called Khorasan, I do not know. Khorasan is an area in Central Asia, north of Iran. Khorasan, and this bread is a very special, particular textured wholemeal brown bread. We move towards an English style breakfast with eggs, different kinds of cold cuts, charcuterie in French, and back to France for some cheese to add substance to the second course of the bread. This is cooked ham, organic, with truffles or truffe, a treasured delicacy in France, and one of the most expensive food items that one can buy. The smoked flavor of this jam moquit, avec truffe, is quite extraordinary. Two kinds of cheese. This one is a Mimenthal from Switzerland, a Dutch style hard cheese. And this is a Conte, Affinage 36 mois, matured in a mountain cave over 36 months and made from non pasteurized milk or raw milk. Now to the main breakfast table orange juice, hard boiled eggs buttered toast, and of course, espresso Italian coffee coming to the espresso machine. The coffee powder used is freshly roasted, 
Italian melange. Orange juice, hard boiled eggs, butter and toast. Edging to us the apero, short for aperitif or aperitivo, a glass of dry white wine from the Basque country, a dry Jurasson. Jurasson wines are normally very sweet, like a Sauterne. I have prepared, as you can see, some cheese cubes and, of course, some croissant bread. And then a dish that is found mainly in the mountains of Haute Savoie in the alpine pastures. It is called a tatiflet. The dish is made from an earthenware cazuela and consists of potatoes, smoked bacon, reblochon cheese, and white wine, baked in a very hot oven until the whole mixture starts to bubble. This morning, Julia has added some egg yolks on the top to imitate a Khwaja Puri of our original native city, Tbilisi in Georgia. So this is a second uh, etap of the brunch and one that could be a main dish as well, preceding our main course of fish in Aji Amarillo. So we continue with our preparations for the Sunday brunch in Avignon, Provence and for the main course I am going to prepare today a fish dish with yellow sauce in the style of Peruvian cuisine, uh, salsa amarilla. We are still in the line of fusion cuisine and I have somewhat modified the recipe to take into account the different location and different kinds of fish. So you have already seen uh, the, our preparations and participation in a traditional French Viennoiserie uh, Petit Déjeuner and then the brunch, people would be coming, dropping in, talking and chatting. It's a great social event, the Sunday brunch or Sunday meeting points. In a moment, I shall take you through the various stages of preparations and cuisine. I have lined up here different kinds of uh, spices, aromatics uh, and condiments that we are going to use uh, in our preparation for the yellow sauce, salsa amarilla. Uh, here we have white rock salt, grain of black pepper, and we have here Sichuan black pepper in a mill for grinding into the sauce. And two tubs of Greek yogurt. Here we have paprika pepper 
and here we have the yellow powder of the curcuma and finally this is the famous Amarilla sauce, uh, the Peruvian sauce, which is yellow pepper ground together. And here is another pepper mill and the rock salt mill. So we will now move over to the aromatics uh, and chopping and cutting. So we begin uh, with uh, chopping the onion, slicing the onion, and for that I'm going to use a famous uh, Damascene knife made by Sukosa Hinura, one of the great swordsmiths of Japan, who now makes collector's kitchen knives. As you can see, it has got the Damascene and his signature here. So we cut the onions, slice it very finely. Then we roughly chop the garlic, one bulb. It doesn't have to be finely cut. And then we come to the vegetables. Careful that you do not chop your fingers off. It is that sharp. And then we have coriander leaf, they call it chilindron, and it will be chopped like this to be fried. One part would be fried, the other part would be kept for uh, garnishing when the cooking is finished. So that is done, we would now move to uh, cutting the fish. This is fresh Atlantic cod, which the French call cabillo. I'm going to cut it into slices like this. And for this, I'm using honiaki. With this knife, you can slice sashimi paper thin. And then I'm going to, to add flavor to the fish dish. I'm going to slice smoked haddock so we have same fish but two different kinds of preparation this is somewhat unorthodox but let us see whether it would work or not so this is smoked haddock now we are ready to go. Cut to the chase. Hold that thought. This is extra virgin olive oil from Liguria. One of the best olive oils that you can get. So what I'm going to do is to switch on the wok for preheating. Otherwise the uh, vegetables, onions and other things would stick. So preheat the wok 
for two or three minutes and then add the olive oil. Ginger and onion goes in together with the garlic. I would add all the ginger but perhaps not and the garlic but perhaps not all the onion. What I want to do is to get the onion cooked. Transparent and then perhaps slightly caramelized to add flavor. Onion is now getting cooked, so this is an important stage. I'm going to sear the fish and seal it. I shall remove, once it is sealed, I'll remove the pieces, which will be added on later when the sauce is ready.
Well, the fish has been cooking now for nearly 20 minutes and it should be ready. It's now a time for the fish to go in and I shall leave the pieces there for two to three minutes to finish off the cooking. And then it would be a question, uh, a matter for dishing up. Uh, to go with this uh, uh, fish dish, uh, I've got rather an interesting wine. This is a white wine from the Basque country, uh, from Saint-Jean-de-Luz, uh, and apparently uh, the wine, after it had passed through the malolactic uh, maturation, was put in uh, barrels 
airtight and they're watertight and then immersed in the sea at a depth of uh, 15 meters. And there it was left uh, to mature. Uh, I have never tasted anything like this. Uh, I don't know whether wine that is matured uh, in the sea at a depth of 15 meters in sea water is going to taste any good or not, but when uh, we are ready to eat, we shall see. So here is a wine from the Basque country with a Basque name, which I shall not attempt to pronounce. As I said, my glacier at Authentic Patissier Chocolatier has provided me with two types of ice cream, glass, a cafe, and a chocolat, and some delectable macaron here to add a reinforcement to the glass. So for dessert, following the brunch, I'm now going to put the glass into these Murano 19th century goblets, cut glass, uh, no longer made in this uh, fashion. Uh, these are period pieces. And uh, here I have these different kinds of scoop and a bowl of hot water to deplace uh, the, the spoon when it gets clogged. So let's see what this is. Yes, I think this is cafe from the Glacier Authentic. It is still, I think, very hard. No, it's coming away easily. So, first scoop, second scoop, third scoop, So this is cafe. One goblet straight into the freezer. 